All right, so today we are making a simple character movement uh, in this way. We won't be looking into animating uh, the thing because that's an entirely separate video. We're just going to be worrying about the movement itself. So let's get started. All right, so we're here in a new clean project and we're going to add a couple of things to start off with. So we're going to start by adding some uh, simple squares. This is just going to be our floor. And then let's also make a couple of simple platforms. These things at the moment do not have any collision because they're literally just sprite renderers. So what we're going to do is we're going to add components and add a box collider 2D to them, which will automatically scale to being the same size as the sprite. But now it actually has collision. And then we'll add one last uh, square sprite here and we'll actually change the color for this one into something like maybe blue is fun. Actually, let's make it green. And this is going to be our player. So we're also going to add a box collider to this one. But if we run the game now, nothing will happen. As you can see, nothing happens. And that is because none of these objects are using any physics. The platforms don't need to use any sort of physics. But obviously we want to have our player be influenced by gravity and then be able to move around. So we're going to add a rigid body to d This just tells the engine that, hey, this object is going to need to have physics calculated for it. There's a bunch of parameters here that you can fill out. You can uh, say whether or not it has a gravity scale and how harsh that is, what the mass for the object is, which then influences a lot of the physics calculations we're going to leave that well alone for the time being just know that if we play the game now we'll see the player fall down and since both of them have a hitbox it stops on the floor but try as we might pressing any buttons not going to do anything because this thing doesn't have any behavior we don't have any scripts on it so we're going to add a component and we'll just type movement you can call it whatever you want, really, but it's good to label your scripts properly. And since there's no components that are called movement, it prompts us with making a new script with the name movement. So we can create an add. Immediately, the script is on this object now. And we can double click this here to open up the script in, in this case, Visual Studio. Here, we're going to need to do a couple of things. First and foremost, we're going to need to make a reference to that rigid body because that's going to be the thing that we tell hey, now you need to be moving, now you need to stop moving. So we'll start by declaring a rigid body 2D, and you can call that whatever you want. I tend to just call them RB for rigid body. And then in the start function, which will run at the start of the game, we say RB equals get component rigid body 2D. So this just looks at this game object and sees, oh, there's a rigid body 2D component. I'll get that and put that as the value for the RB variable. Then in the update function, which is the code that runs every frame during the game, we can now say RB velocity equals new vector two, and we'll say inputs dot get access raw. In parentheses, we say horizontal. And then for the second parameter, we say RB dot velocity dot y so what this will do now is every frame it will set the velocity for our rigid body to a new vector 2 value which will be equal to for the x input get axis raw so this is one of the axes that you can go into your settings in your unity project and say this is the name of this axis and these are the buttons that correspond to it horizontal is just one of the ones that are pre-baked into every project and it works with the arrow keys and a and d keys and that just gives you a value back so we have pressing left or a will give a value of one pressing right or d will give a value of minus one if you're playing on a controller and you're using an analog stick you can get values in between those two as well and then the second one rb velocity y just tells it use the velocity it already has to set the new velocity as because otherwise it will stop its vertical movement so if we now save this script and we start playing the game we should see that we can move left and right but it's really really slow so 
let's fix that. That's relatively simple to fix. We're going to make a serialized field, uh, float, and we're just going to call it speed, which by default will equal five. Serialized field means nothing more or less that you can change this variable within the editor without it needing to be public and available for every other object. And then of course, it's a float value with a value of five. Now in here, our RB velocity, la la la, this thing, our get access raw, as I said before, it's a value between one and negative one, which is not a lot. So we can then multiply that by our speed variable and that will make sure that we move about five times faster. And now we're moving pretty quickly from side to side. You can even see if I uh, put the movement speed during runtime up to 10, I'm moving even faster. If we move it up to 100, you can see I'll probably get off screen real quick. Let's add jumping, because right now we can move left and right, but we have got these platforms over here that we can't do anything with. So after that, we're going to put a if statement and we're going to check if inputs get buttoned down and we'll say jump, which is a button that Unity uh, comes with. And we can check out how that actually works if we go into uh, Windows here and we can just search for a new window and we'll look up the inputs manager, which is part of the project settings. Let's put that up here. And if we take a look at these axes here, we'll see horizontal. This is the one we used before. So we've got negative and positive buttons, but we've also got jump here, which has the positive button for space. Here we're checking if input get button down, which is just checking whether or not space is being pressed. We can very much change that into control or shift or the H key or whatever you want, right? You can do that within Unity and this bit of code will still do the same thing without having to go back and change every reference to that axis in all of your code. It's a little side tangent, very important to understand. And again, we can do something very similar. RB velocity equals new vector two, and we're going to do it the other way around now. So what we're going to do is we're going to maintain the RB velocity dot X which is the horizontal, and then the Y value will actually set to another serialized field, float, jump height. And let's set that by default also to five. So we can now put in jump height here, and that's everything there is to it. So now we can move left and right, and if you press the space bar, we are jumping a little bit. The jump height is going to need to be higher, so we can just test that out to be 15, which is too high but it's also, we're very floaty. And as you can see, there's some rigid body related stuff that's also not quite working. So at this point, we go back into the rigid body and down in constraints, we're actually going to freeze the Z rotation. This will make it so that we can't rotate by colliding into something because that's something we definitely don't want for this object. And now we can start messing around with the gravity scale as well. So maybe increase the gravity scale a lot and then also increase the jump height a lot. That way we'll still jump relatively the same height, but we'll go down much faster. That gives your character a lot more weight to it. And there's things like this, which we can fix with a physics material real quick. So as you can see, we have in the rigid body, we have a material set to none. So we can make a new 2D physics material 2D, specifically make a 2D one. There's also just normal physics materials those are meant for 3d use so let's call this player and then we just set the friction to being zero then in the rigid body settings we just simply drag this over to the material and now when we press up against these walls we still slide down them there's just one last thing we need to do because now we have an infinite jump and you definitely don't want that in a real game because <laughs> that makes any platforming pretty trivial. So we are going to, in this if statement, check for another thing. And we're going to do that by putting two n percents there. We're going to put a math function in here and that's called approximately. So what we'll do here is we'll 
give it two values. The first value is going to be our RB velocity dot y which is our vertical movement and then the second value is going to be what it should approximately be and that's zero the reason we don't check if it's exactly equals to zero is very simply because it will never be exactly equal to zero so if we use math approximately instead it will check whether or not it's approximately equal to zero and that way this will only run if we're not either going up or going down and as you can see, I can mash the button and I will only be jumping when I'm on the ground. And that's your basic character movement script. If you've got any questions, please do let me know in the comments down below. Soon I'll probably be doing a part two on this video where we also implement some animations. Because as fun as this is, you probably want to have your sprite animations go along with this.